It is. Okay. Well, welcome to the first fast, fast Track call. My name is Karen Batty. I am a senior director with the Pampered Chef, and I've been doing uh, this business for over 17 years now, which seems very hard to believe. Um, if you're on this call, it's because you saw that serious and curious thing or talked to your director and you decided that, that was for you. That was something you either needed or wanted from this business. And if you watch that serious, curious training, um, you know that achieving success in this business is not really a matter of style or personality. It's really largely a numbers game. Plain and simply, we need to do enough shows so that we can sell enough products to make a decent income and also do enough shows so that we get enough bookings to keep our momentum going, enough shows so that we see enough people and enough of them will be interested and curious to learn more and enough of those who are curious will then decide that this is something that they'd like to do themselves. We also need to do enough shows to get enough practice so that we can hone the skills that are needed to have a thriving business. And as we shared on that Serious and Curious training, the magic number really is eight. Now, this number wasn't chosen by me or determined by me. It was determined by Pampered Chef after extensive research. But I can tell you that after 17 years in this business and training hundreds of people, that that number eight has held true for virtually everybody that I work with. Not only did it, did it make a huge difference in my own personal business when I got up to this, the eight shows, but with people that I've worked with as well. So you needed to have four live shows to start this series. Um, and by the end of our second week's call, um, you wanna be up to that eight live cooking shows a month to be able to continue because that's what you'll need in order to practice what we're gonna be teaching you each week. So to help you reach that goal, our first two calls are gonna be focused on helping you fill your calendars. And by the way, if you're an overachiever or you really want to accelerate the process, instead of booking eight, go ahead and book ten. Okay. Um, tonight, what I'm going to be sharing you is a strategy that I share with all of my new consultants. And I know most of you aren't brand new, but you can apply the same strategy to kicking off your business in the new season as new people do in kicking off their new business. Um, the first couple of steps you might already have done. But the first step is to take out your calendar and decide when you're going to do your parties. And I encourage you to go ahead and mark your next three months worth of availability. Um, but when then it comes to scheduling the parties, you really want to be focusing on the next 30 days. However, if someone says they can't do it in the next 30 days, rather than calling them back at another time and trying to reconnect, Go ahead and get them in the calendar at whatever earliest time that you can. And that's why it's good to know your availability ahead of time. So after you know when you're going to do your parties, the next thing is, you know, fill in the dates. And you know what? The first two dates are going to be super easy for you um, because they can be your own shows. How many of you are doing a last chance first glance party in, in February? Show of hands. Okay. I encourage all of you to do one. If you've got a date open in, in, in February, go ahead and schedule yourself a last chance first glance party. That means last chance to buy those products that are going to be retired at the end of the month. And that includes the three baking stones. And I don't know about you, but I love my mini loaf pan. And um, what is that? That, that the, the thing that looks like a bunt pan, but we can't say bunt because it's copyrighted, whatever that is. The fluted pan. I love that thing. So you can invite people over to purchase those and other items that are going to be leaving uh, the product line at the end of the month. So that's why it's called a last chance and first glance because they can get a sneak preview at what's coming out next month. And hopefully a few of them are going to want to schedule parties of their own once they see the new catalog. If you have absolutely no space in your calendar for another February show, then go ahead and, and book yourself a couple of spring kickoff shows as early as you can in March. And notice I said shows because you guys can do a kickoff party and schedule two different dates and times for it. It just increases people's chances of being able to attend. So I recommend that you pick one date that's like in the middle of the week, the week a weekday, evening, and then maybe a weekend, maybe during the day. Um, so you could do like a Thursday night and like a Saturday brunch or early afternoon show or something like that. 
you can send out one invitation with both dates and times. Um, like I said, it just increases people's chances of being able to attend. But right now, I don't want you to send out that invitation. I don't want you to post it all on Facebook yet, okay? Because I want to kind of give you some strategies on how to make the most of, of these shows. Now, maybe some of you are thinking, but I did one of these. Did anybody do one of these, like in December or early January, anything like that? Oh, good. I don't see any hands going up. That's awesome. But if, if, if in case anybody, I missed somebody who did do a show recently, um, hey, if you did it in December, that was before the holidays. That was many, many moons ago. And it, similarly, if you did it in January as a New Year's thing, you can do another one now. I mean, think about if you went to Macy's a couple of weeks after Christmas just to see what they had on sale. If a friend called you this week to say, hey, I'm going to Macy's, you want to come with me? Would you say, oh, I can't possibly go. I already went in January. Of course you wouldn't say that. You'd say, sure, you know, because you just be going to hang out with friends. So the same is true. And like I said, you've got these retiring items to uh, let people know about that we didn't know about until a short while ago. And you've got these new products to show off as well. Now it's very important um, before you start reaching out to people that you know these dates so you can specifically invite them to this. Okay, so, um, so that's show number one and two. Wasn't that easy? You just ask yourself if you have a couple shows and tell yourself yes, ah, done. Um, the next thing you're gonna do is strive for two more parties the week following your, your parties, your kickoffs. And for, for these two shows, I always say think about the few people you have in your life that you could ask anything of, that they would just do a favor for you in a pinch. Um, if you said, I have a favor, they'd say, sure, what do you need before they even knew what it was? And the favor isn't having a party because Pepper Chef is gonna reward them very generously for that. But the favor is the timing. You want it the week following your kickoff parties because hopefully you're gonna get bookings from your kickoff parties, but a lot of people don't wanna book one week out. So if you get that next week filled, that's gonna give you the buffer you need so that when you get bookings from your kickoff party and people wanna wait a couple of weeks, you're gonna be able to do that because you're not gonna have any availability before then anyway. So you know, call a couple of people that you know well, a mom, a best friend, a sister, um, those people that if you called and asked them for a kidney, they'd give you one. Um, they're gonna be so glad you're just calling to see if they wanna have a few friends over for a pampered chef party. Um, if you're new, you can say, I'm, I'm so excited, I'm really new, I'm getting started with the pampered chef, and I'm like, just looking for some friends that I can practice on. Uh, what do you think about having a few friends over for a fun wine, cheese, and chocolate show, or uh, make your own pizza show, or something like that, and say that you're really looking to fill that week. Again, these are your best buds that you're calling right now. And of course, you can let them know that the average host saves about $150. And that right now we've got these retiring items that their friends are going to want to see before they leave the product line. Now, if you're not brand new, here's what I recommend saying. This has worked very nicely when I've run this series in the past. This has really helped people fill their calendars. You can say something like, um, I'm looking to take my, new, my business to the next level this season. And I have been invited to be part in a lead group of consultants who are being trained to be the company's next field leaders. And I need a few, few more shows in my calendar in order to get into this class. Okay? Who could say no to that? They're going to be like, oh my gosh, that's great. Fantastic. And so, so you just say, I'm wondering if you can help me out by having a few friends over for a fun Pamper Jeff show in the next couple of weeks. And, and then you can also share what's in it for them. Again, if you're booking February, talk about those products that are leaving the product line that they and their friends can get in on before they're gone. If you're booking uh, March at this point, you can talk about the new products that are coming out and the fact that they can be first on the scene with the new calendar or catalog. Okay. So now, um, hopefully, shows number three and four are filled in. So you've got two that you're doing yourself a couple of best friends that would do anything for you, and they're going to be so excited that you've been invited to be part of this elite group. And by the way, it is an elite group. There's about 22 of you in this group, but um, the, all the if you took the teams of the directors involved and added them all up, it's probably close to 400 people. So this is an elite group that you have been invited to be a part of. So definitely share that. You should be proud and out loud about that. Okay. 
Um, and by the way, don't underestimate the fact that some of the people that you know might be actually more excited about the fact that they're helping you than they are about the free products they're going to get. When I first got started, um, I, I called my sister. I was, so, I was telling her how excited I was and a little bit nervous. And I thought of her because I know how much she loves a bargain. And I said, what do you think about getting some friends together? And she had this great kitchen. I said, oh, and I'll help you fill it with free products. And she just was like, you know me. I hate to cook. I, my kitchen's already full. I, I really don't need anything. Uh, but when I said to her, oh, well, will you do it anyway? Because I need to get some practice. And I'm looking to line up my initial shows and my sister. Will you do it for me anyway? And she was like, oh my gosh, yeah, sure, yeah, no problem. So some people are going to be more motivated by the fact that they're helping you than they are about the free products. Share both things. Because like I said, when you're starting with those next couple of shows, you're starting with those BFFs, those people that would do anything for you. Okay. So the next thing that I recommend that you do is just gather up all the names of everybody you know who is. Go on to Facebook, look through the names there, and remind yourself who, of who you know. Um, look through your cell phone. Look at the people who are logged down there. All of a sudden, you'll, you'll be reminded of lots of people that don't immediately come to mind. Um, think of the people you've seen in the past week. If you have a job outside of Pampered Chefs, think of all the people there. Um, if you have kids, people that you know through your children, who have you seen in the past week? Um, if you go to a gym or, or a yoga studio or whatever, you know, think of all those people that you know. And don't exclude men. Don't prejudge this list. Just, just kind of pull in all the names of all the people that you know in different areas of your life. If you have a spouse, think of all the people you know through your spouse. And even think about prior jobs that you had or when you went to school in the past, like who you know through there. Just kind of make a, make a big list. Pretend you're getting married and, you know, you can have every living person you know there and cost is, is not an issue. Think of them who would you put on your list. Actually, that's a bad analogy because you don't even have to like them well enough to invite them to the wedding in order to put them on your list. Um, and like I said, don't just think about the few neighbors that you know or the few coworkers that you like. Think about it this way. If you had a car to sell, would you only tell your mom and like three really good friends? No, because they don't have to like know you really well or like you in order to buy a car. They just have to need to meet a car. And you know, the same thing is true with Pampered Chef. They don't need to know you very, very well in order to um, have a party or come to a show. Um, so list everybody on there. And do not at this point send out an invitation for your party. No, 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 that's not what we're doing with this list. The next thing is to start personally reaching out to as many people on the list as you can. And I mean personally reaching out. If they always use text, I want you to just text them and say something like, hi, I have really exciting news, do you have a minute to talk? Okay, and then see if you can call them. Um, if they always use Facebook and you're always communicating with them through a Facebook message, same thing. Message them saying, I've got some really exciting news, do you have a minute to talk? If they use a phone, pick them up and call them. Um, if you see them, go up and talk to them, you know, if they're a coworker or something like that. And again, you just say, I've been invited to be part of this elite group of consultants who are being trained um, to be the company's next field leaders. I'm so excited to be asked to be part of this group, but I need a few more shows in my calendar in order to get into the class. And um, I also just learned about our new spring products or the retiring items, you know, depending on what time frame you're booking, know what's in it for them and share that as well. And then see if they'd like to have a few friends over and have a party. So you're gonna briefly share your goal Focus on something that you think they'd be excited about, whether it's the products that are leaving the catalog, the new ones that are coming out, whether it's a Margarita Madness show, or whatever you think they would most enjoy about a party. And then see, see what happens. And remember, you are not asking for a kidney. You are offering a free shopping spree and fun with friends. And you re when you reach out with them, you are probably gonna get one of two answers. Um, you might get a yes, 
one out of approximately six to eight people that we talked to about having a party will say yes. Okay, so when, the, if they, when you hear yes, say, oh my gosh, that's fantastic. Well, I am currently booking the week of whatever. My next two available dates are this and this. Do either of those work for you? Work, great. If not, go on to the next week. Do your available dates in that week and so on. Now, if you don't hear yes, you may hear a no. Um, usually they don't just say no. Usually they give you a reason. They tell you why. Because these are, you're calling, you know, people that you know. And um, if they give you a reason, it's probably one of three things. It's probably either, oh my gosh, you know, I'd love to have a party, but oh, I just don't know enough people, or I never have a good turnout. Okay, something along those lines. Or they'll say, my house is too small. Um, or I, I just don't think I have the time right now. Those are the three things we hear over and over and over again. For those of you who've been in business, nod if you hear these things over and over and over again. Yes, exactly. Now, if you hear just a plain old no, go ahead and go, oh my gosh, really? How come? Find out what their hesitation is. Not in an interrogating sort of way, just in an incredulous, like, oh my gosh, you kidding me? These great products coming out. You want a party? You know, ask me how come, and they'll probably tell you. Now, once you are really comfortable with this business, addressing hesitations will roll off your tongue like the alphabet. But for right now, I'm gonna share with you what I call the universal solution when you are new or bumping up your business like this for the new season. So you guys ready for the universal solution? Actually, before I share the universal solution with you, I want you to think about when someone says to you, oh, I just don't know enough people, I never have a good turnout, or my house is too small, or I don't have enough time, what are they really saying to you? What they're really saying is, I don't think I'll have a good party. I don't think it'll be successful. And because you've told them that, you know, you've been invited to be part of this class and you, have a, you need a couple more shows on the, on the books, all of a sudden they're thinking, oh goodness, it better be a good one. Because if it doesn't go well, it's, it's gonna be all my fault. So they're, they're almost feeling like they have to say no because they're afraid it won't be successful for you. So you may, need to make it really, really, really clear to them that every show is very, very valuable, regardless of the size, okay? So if someone says to you, I'd love to have a party, but oh, I just don't know enough people, I don't know who I'd invite, um, all you say is, oh, you know what, that's okay. My trainer says the most important thing that's gonna determine my success in this program is simply how much practice I get, especially in the next 30 days. She said it doesn't matter if I'm practicing in front of a handful of people or a house full of people. She says that every show is incredibly valuable as long as I'm getting practice and people are having fun. So do you wanna be one of my smaller, more intimate shows? Now doesn't that sound easy to say yes to? And, is, and don't you think people are gonna feel like, oh my gosh, I really can help, you know, help her or him? Because I might not know a lot of people, but if, if practice is important, and that's valuable, oh, okay, I can say yes to a party. Similarly, if they say their house is too small. Now, some of you already know some solutions for this. If they live close to you, you can offer, you know, to have it at your place, or you can see if they have a coworker or a family member who has a different place that they could use. However, if you can't think of a solution off the top of your head, this universal solution works again. You can just say, oh, that's okay. My trainer says the most important thing that would determine my success in this program is how much practice I get, in my, especially in my first 30 days. She just said it doesn't matter whether I'm practicing in front of a handful of people or a house full of people. So um, she said all shows are really, really valuable. So do you want to be one of my smaller shows when my more intimate parties? And similarly, when someone says they don't have enough time, you know, sometimes people think that having a Pampa Chef show is kind of like, you know, hosting a wedding, you know, and they think it's gonna be this big, huge event. So if they say, oh, I'm just not sure I have enough time, then you can say to them, well, you know what, do you think you have time just to have a couple of friends, a few friends over? As my trainer says, the most important thing that's gonna determine my success in this program is how much practice I get. 
It doesn't matter if I'm practicing in front of just a handful of people or a house full. And again, it just gives people that ease to say, ah, okay, pressure's off. I don't have to have a huge crowd. But of course, you're going to work with them, especially um, in a couple of weeks when we talk about host coaching, helping them have a successful party. And many of those people who don't think that they know enough people or um, don't think they have the time to have a really successful show find out that they do. But you know what? Even if they don't, just like we heard earlier from um, getting names already, but four people were at her party. That's hardly a huge party, but three of them were interested in the business. So really, every show is truly valuable. Um, one of the most successful um, directors on my team, she is now a senior director on my team, she came from a party with three guests, and two of them were recent past hosts of mine. So that might have seemed like not a very big and successful party, but we just never know. So every show really is valuable. So if you explain that to them and then say, so what do you think? Do you want to be one of my smaller intimate parties? Uh, if it's a yes, then of course, offer them, say I'm currently booking the week of da 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 da. Here are my available dates. Do you think those work for you? Uh, but if it's still a no, then what you can say, well, you know what? There's another great way that you can help me with this goal. And you can still get in on seeing what's going to be leaving the product line and get a sneak preview of the new stuff that's coming in because I am having a last chance first glance party on and let them know the dates. And then you can say, do you think you can come and bring a couple of friends? My trainer says probably the second best thing that will help me um, is to get the word out. Um, beyond my family and friends as quickly as I can. So if you came to that with a couple of friends, that would be a huge help as well. What do you think? Okay, so notice that you're asking them to bring a couple of friends. If you don't, if you don't give them another alternative, these are friends of yours, they're gonna to wanna to help you, but they won't know how to help you. If you just ask about a party they'll, and, and they don't wanna have one, they'll, they'll say, oh, but I'll place an order. And placing an order is fine, but it doesn't really help you build your business. Um, but if you give them this other option, they'll be, they'll be relieved. I mean, who can't come to a party and bring a friend or two? You know? And so you can say to them, um, and notice I said a couple of friends. Because if you say bring a friend, they'll invite a friend. And then half the time, that friend has to cancel at the last minute. But if you say bring a couple of friends, they'll invite a couple of friends. And one of them will cancel at the last minute and they'll show up with a friend, which is still really good. And let me tell you, these bring a friend people are huge, are a huge asset to your business. Because when a host is having a party, we encourage the host to invite everyone they know, right? But when someone is said, oh, bring a friend or two, bring a couple of friends to the party, they sit there and they think, gee, of everyone I know who loves Pamper Chef, or who loves to cook, or who's a total foodie, or who just moved into a new place and needs Pampa Chef products. So they hand pick these people that are much more likely than the general population to really, really need and want what we have to offer, not just the products, but hosting a party and the business opportunity. So these bring a friend people are golden. And you can even tell the people when you're talking up your show, and they say no to show and you're encouraging them to bring friends. Of course, you explain the why behind it, but then you can say to them, hey, by the way, you know, I'm gonna be raffling off a couple of big ticket items at this party. And you could win just for coming. You know, you get one ticket just for coming, but I'm gonna give you five extra tickets for every adult friend that you bring that I didn't invite. And so, um, just so you guys know, because I know some of you are new, um, at the, these shows that you're doing, that you're hosting, you are the consultant earning the free product. Uh, excuse me, you are the consultant earning the commission. You are also the host earning the free product as well. So you can use a portion of the host rewards to pay for raffle items. So these things do not have to come out of your pocket. Um, if someone just jumped on, you might want to um, click mute because there's some static coming. In that one okay so um, now if you really really honestly glue yourself to this process 
until you've spoken with, had a live conversation, either live or over the phone, not texting, not emailing and waiting for a response, but do you really glue yourself to this process till you've spoken to 20 people? You will probably book at least four more parties and have multiple people coming to your, to your party with friends. Um, some of them aren't gonna be free you know, when you're having the party, but they'll probably place orders. Um, also know that you can offer a referral bonus. You can say for next month only, or you know, um, if you know anybody who's interested in seeing what's new from Pamper Chef, I'm offering a referral bonus. You, if you're new, you can talk over what you might offer as a referral bonus with your director. Um, but know that it's an investment in your business, and if you watch that series and curious, you know that once the parties are in place, that whole number game can start working in your favor. So it's good to just kind of pick a 30-day window and do whatever you have to do to fill it. Because once it's full, it's, it's full, and it's a really great place to be. Now, if you continue this process throughout your entire list of people you know, and you talk to 30 or 40, um, you will probably book up beyond March and into April, and maybe even all of April. And let me tell you, you are gonna be aligned for rock star results. Um, you will probably be earning over $1,000 a month right away, and much more down the road, in a pretty short while down the road. You will probably earn a trip for four to Disney this year, if you make the next 30 days that time frame that you just bite the bullet and get those eight parties in there. And um, if you are new and um, you're earning PC dollars, you could earn well over a thousand PC dollars as well. How cool would that be? And most gloriously, you probably won't ever have to do this again. Um, I did a process similar to this about 17 years ago, and I have never had to book oh, an entire calendar again. Do I need to fill a spot here and there? Absolutely. Um, but when you've got a, but you know, when you've got a customer base, you know, a mile long because you've been in business a while, you know, it's easy to fill a spot or two. So, um, and then you're gonna you're gonna have that enough. You're gonna have enough shows. You're getting enough practice. Um, you, you're feeling very comfortable and confident with what you do. You're getting enough bookings, enough recruit leads to have all those numbers that you saw um, on the Serious and Curious fall into place. And then you will have that self-sustaining calendar that works for you. But wait, because you're not quite done yet. So after you've gone through your list and, and reached out and had as many personal conversations as you can, and you've gotten more bookings in your calendar. So the goal in this process is the bookings, not necessarily sales at show, okay? After you've done that, you're gonna send out the official invite. And you're gonna do just what you want your host to do. Plaster it all over Facebook, email it to everybody they know, but then personally invite as well. And what I encourage you to do is print out a stack of invitations, okay? Because you know, in, in our lives, we all have sort of concentric circles. In the center of the circle is the dot that's us. And just around the dot is family, right? And then the dot gets bigger and it's extended family and friends. And then it's close family and friends and it's acquaintances. So I wanna help you get to that next circle of, of people that you know, because each circle gets bigger and bigger, okay? There's more people in each concentric circle. So print out a bunch of invitations to hand out. I encourage you to put one in every mailbox of every neighbor. How many of you would love to get to know your neighbors better? Raise your hand. <laughs> Some of you are like, yeah, okay, I see your hands up, yep. Most people would love to get to know their neighbors better. And right now, in the middle of winter in New England, people aren't exactly taking walks with the kids and all that. They might go out with the dog for all of three minutes and then they're right back inside. Nobody's hanging out in the yard or anything like that. It's hard to get to know your neighbors. Um, and yet everybody, you know, a lot of people say they would really love to get to know their neighbors better. And inviting them to a, your Pamper Chef party is a really easy atmosphere for people to come into. 
So say you're on the receiving end of that invitation. You just moved into a neighborhood about a year ago, but you still don't know that many neighbors because you have to get up and out of the house really early to come to work. And when you come home, you got to get in, you get dinner on the table, and then you go to bed at night. So you haven't really got to meet many of your neighbors. And all of a sudden, you get this invitation to this pamper chef party. And you're thinking, wow, there's someone who sells pamper chef on my street. I didn't even know that. And wow, if she's inviting me, she's probably inviting all my neighbors. Oh, this would be a great way to get to meet the neighbors. Oh, great. And, you know, when they come into the party, I always have a stack of uh, name tags right there. So even if you don't know their name, you don't have to address the invitation. You just have to give it to them. Now they, they can walk into the door. They make yourself a name tag. They put it on. And on your table or your island or your counters or whatever, you've got all your pampered chef products set up. They come walking over. People are gabbing. They're having a little wine. They're talking. They're schmoozing. They're having fun. And they're all like, oh, my gosh, look at this product. I've never seen this before. What does this do? And someone else is going, oh, I have this. I love it. And so it's a really easy way for everybody to kind of get to know each other. So, hand it out to every neighbor. Um, if you have a job outside of Pamper Chef, don't just invite the three people you know well. You might personally call them to invite them to have a party of their own, but when it comes to then inviting um, you know, the world, then yeah, go to every single person that you work with, even if you don't know their last name, even if you don't know their email address, you can hand them an invitation. There are pocket Pamper Chef groupies everywhere. Again, remember, treat it like you're selling a car. You want to get the word out to everywhere, everyone, because you have no idea who needs and wants a car, right? And again, the same is true with Camper Chef. So hand it out to everyone that you work with. Um, go to the bank and hand it out to all those tellers that you see week after week. Um, give one to the person who does your hair or your nails, plus everybody else that's in the salon. Um, Give, when, you go to your, when you go to the gym, hand it out to people you see there. You might really only know them by, oh, that's the guy that loves the elliptical. That's fine. You know, hand them an invite. Um, if you go to a yoga class, hand it out there. Um, if you frequent a coffee shop, hand it out there. Um, if you have kids and you're at the bus stop or at the pickup line at the school, hand it out there. The soccer field, the karate or the dance studio, music lessons and more. Um, if your kids are younger and are in daycare, hand it out to the people who work at the daycare, plus the other parents who are dropping off their kids at daycare. Okay? Just as many as you possibly can. This is that next circle of people. And these people, these people that are outside of your immediate uh, family and friends are the ones that are going to help you most in building the bridge between the people you know and what I call the great beyond. Because sometimes, you know, when our family members have parties for us, they fill the room with family members, which is fine. But we want to build that bridge. So when you go to that, that outer circle of people that you know, they all know people you don't know. And these people are going to be the ones that are going to really help launch your business um, beyond. Okay. So if you stick with this process, if you work these kickoff shows this way, be really, really intentional over the next week to 10 days in working it this way. All I can say is get ready for the most exciting ride of your life because your business is going to start rocketing. And, and especially because you're part of this series, um, you're going to fill that calendar just in time where we're going to teach you exactly what to do with each and every one of these parties so that you can make the most of it and, and have it um, grow into a very thriving business. Okay, I do want to let you know that we're going to be creating a Facebook group for this group. I will be posting the link to the callback for this if you want to listen to it over and over. I will also be posting my notes as well. So you can go back if there were some phrases that you really thought would work for you. You can go back and cut and paste and, and print those out. Um, if any of you um, have an invitation that you're using for a kickoff party, if you want to post it there so other people can see and share, because um, if you're all posting ideas, probably everybody can make their invitation a little bit, um, a little bit better. Um, okay, so I'm going to open it up to Q&A so you guys can unmute your lines and jump in if you have a question. Everybody's still muted.
<laughs> oh, I also want to share a couple of tips for doing that kickoff party or that last chance first glance. Um, in addition to offering tickets for people bringing a friend, um, if making a bunch of recipes is going to kind of put it over the top for you, you can also offer tickets for people who bring a Pamper Chef recipe made ahead to share. Because if you're inviting Pamper Chef people over, if you're, you know, customers over, um, I've always had five or six of them that they all come in with their baking stones and all of their recipes on there. It's a huge time saver. It's a huge money saver. It's five people making recipes, it's, you don't have to do anything. Um, at this party, I would recommend a shorter demo um, and, and do a lot more mingling. Um, really focus on the fun, okay? Um, I would recommend a special drawing just for bookings. So you can have a drawing um, for people who come, they get their tickets for attending, one ticket for attending, maybe two or three tickets for bringing a recipe, uh, five tickets for every friend. So that's gonna be one drawing. The second drawing, the bigger drawing is going to be only for people who schedule parties in the next 30 days. They don't receive that item. You do the drawing that night, so they'll schedule a party that night, but they don't receive the item until the night of their show. So you're not handing them that product and then they cancel their party. Um, and the drawings, like I said, you can use your host rewards to pay for them. So you, you, you tell people you'll get the, the prize when the products come in with your orders. Other people have done balloons where they um, take a prize and put it in a balloon, blow up a balloon and put a date on the balloon. And you can have them up and around and you say, pick a, um, pick a balloon, pick whatever date's on it, and then pop it and you get whatever prize is inside. So it could wow. be something like bring the ingredients, you know, I'll bring the ingredients for your show, or it could say $15 in free merchandise. Um, know that if you're giving $15 in free merchandise, it won't cost you $15 because you're putting it on the host discount and you're making your commission. If you've got a duplicate of an item, an extra batter bowl, you know, um, stick a date on there and put batter bowl in there. Um, if you've got duplicates of spring products that you've, uh, uh, because you went to um, feast and they gave you a couple of items, but then you also earned some items. Maybe you've got a duplicate of an item. Take that item and put it in the balloon. You could tell people the, the, the dates that are closer have bigger prizes. So the closer in you book, the bigger the prize is likely to be. Um, if you want, you can have a grand prize and you can tell people what the grand prize is. Um, so something like that to make it real fun. And like I said, your main goal for this party is, is to get as many bookings as you can to get this, this numbers game that we talked about in the Series and Curious uh, thing working in your favor. Okay. Wow, I said I hoped it lasted 40 minutes and it was exactly 40 minutes. <laughs> okay, yay. <laughs> so, um, okay, so any questions, any comments? You guys are awfully quiet. I have an insight. <laughs> What's your insight? I scheduled the um, last hand first glance. So I already have a, a flyer already set for that. Oh, okay. Well, if you've already started uh, talking it up, that's that's quite all right. But you can still be calling people that may not have even seen the flyer yet to, to share the news with them. Yeah. I like that special drawing for bookings. That's a really good one. Good, yeah. And even if you didn't put that in your in your invite, you can still offer that on the night of your party. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Yeah, absolutely. Anybody else? Questions? I have a quick question. How long is this series? Just so I know not to book Wednesdays to be involved in the series. About 90 days. And I'm not sure of the exact last date, but it's, it, you know, we're, we're doing, um, it's about a 45 minute call Wednesdays. For a full, for the full 90 days and then every Wednesday of that 90 days? Yes, we're doing like a 45 minute call once a week on Wednesday evenings. Sorry, it was the only night I had free. No, no, that's fine. A12, A12. So um, every week there will be assignments. So this this week's assignment is to schedule one of these. Like I said, if, if you don't have any time left in February, then, then make it in the, um, the first week of, of March and then use this strategy for inviting. 
Um, Yep, so that's your only assignment this week. Next week is also going to be about bookings. It's going to be um, different strategies out and about bookings. That's going to be uh, by uh, Susan Moulton, who's um, a top seller in our area. She's fantastic at getting bookings out and about. Okay, so I'm going to stop the recording. But, um, I think I stopped it. Yay. Okay, but I'll stay on the line for another couple minutes if anybody has any other questions. Oh, I'm good. Okay. Good, Karen. Okay. Good, thank you. All right, have a great night, everybody. Thank, thank you. Karen. Bye. Okay. Karen, I did make it on. Yay! Oh, there you are. Good. Whoops. I just. Clicked. Okay, there we go. If you missed the beginning, um, I, it, it's recorded so that you can um, so that you can hear the beginning of it and it all makes sense to you. What time did you end up getting on? Not until about nine. Oh, so okay. I did yeah. miss about half an hour. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you'll want you'll want to get the beginning of it. Absolutely. It all makes sense. Absolutely. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye. Anybody excited about any of the things they heard tonight? You guys are so quiet. I am. Good. I'm excited. Okay. Some good ideas. Yeah, they yeah, are. There's a lot of good ones. Good, good. And like I said, if you just make it your focus over the next two weeks, just bookings, 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 um, really, the rest does sort of magically almost fall into place. And then mm -hmm. you work on fine-tuning the skills, then it's even better. But even before the skills are fine-tuned, just when the parties are in place, you know, a lot of it just, just, just happens. So. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, everybody have a great evening and um, check out the Facebook. Thanks. I don't know how long it's going to take me to upload this because, you know, I need assistance for that. So, <laughs> but be on the for the, for the recording. All right. Great. Thank you, Karen. Bye, Karen. Thanks, Karen. Bye. Bye.